Welcome back to the reading of A Good Kind of Trouble by Lisa Moore Ramy. We're going to be reading chapters 41, titled Later, 42, titled As If, and 43, titled Blocks. And before you begin reading this, the question I asked in class was a prediction question. What do you predict was going to happen after those three really rough chapters that Shayla had to go through in terms of her friendships and trust being broken between all the friends. And what happens is confrontation. Confrontation means a big problem between two people, um, usually involving a very heated and loud argument at times, and that's what we're going to see in these next three chapters. So let's begin later on page 220. In English, Miss Jacobs reminds us again to keep up with our eyeball journals. There's a lot going on right now, she says, quite a lot to observe and think about. Remember, make your own minds up. She's staring right at me. Then she claps her hands and starts talking about prepositional phrases. After class, I run into Isabella in the hallway, which is weird because her fourth period isn't on this floor. But here she is, right in the middle of a swarm of people with her hands on her hips, letting everyone bump into us. Why were you avoiding me and Julia all winter break? Are you mad at us? Are you mad with me? I squish us out of the middle of the hall, off to the side. Someone's backpack whacks me in the shoulder. For the first time, I'm glad there's so many people because it takes a minute to wade through everyone, which is good because I need a minute to figure out what it is I want to say. I really want Jace to like me and I really, really want him not to like Isabella. But I also want my friends back. I think about Coach West's story. I press against the wall of lockers and I catch my breath. We're good, I smile to try to show her how good we are. I wasn't avoiding you guys. I was grounded. I don't have my phone. I feel like I'm playing that game two truths and a lie. I bet Isabella can figure out which part of what I said isn't true. But you've been talking to Tyler. Her voice sounds raspy. No. Well... Yeah, he called me, but uh, we haven't been talking. I know I sound ridiculous. What have people been saying? I'll tell you when you tell me what's really going on, Isabella says. I can tell she's frustrated with me because her eyebrows are so close together. It's almost like her uni brow is back. I feel frustrated too. It's obviously unfair that I'm stuck with two boys liking me, who I don't like at all, while she gets the one that I do like. And explaining about Tyler is too complicated. I really need to know what people are saying. Come on, Iz, please, I beg. Just tell me. Isabella puts her hands on her hips. No, she says, you first. My eyes open real wide at that. I don't know if I've ever heard Isabella say no like that. I'm so shocked. I almost tell her right there, but I still don't know exactly what to say. I, I'll tell you later, okay? Let's go eat lunch. Fine, Isabella says, and we walk to the overhang area without saying anything else. Before Isabella and I can sit down, Julia walks up with Tyler. Hey, Shayla, look at who I bumped into, Julia says. He was looking for you. She says it like it's fine and totally normal. It's not fine, and no way is it normal. Why can't Tyler leave me alone? And why did Julia have to bring him to our lunch table? Hey, Shayla, Tyler says softly. We all just stand there for a second. I feel like my friends are waiting to see what I'm going to do. I hate how it feels between us now. Like we're china plates, trying to not get cracked. 
I sit down and open my lunch. I'm starved, I say. Just as if there aren't some sweaty boys staring at me, I don't know what else to do. Isabel and Julia sit too, but Tyler just stands there. Um, go ahead and sit down, Tyler, Isabella says. Tyler sits down right away, and of course, he sits down right next to me. Isabella watches me like I'm a science experiment, and Julia looks back and forth between me and Tyler like she's at the movies. I bet she wishes she had some popcorn. I managed to get through the whole lunch period without ever speaking to Tyler directly. It isn't even that hard. When the bell rings, some of Tyler's friends walk by and see him sitting next to me. They start smiling and laughing and throwing punches at each other. Sometimes I really hate boys. He gets up and runs off with them. Well, first he puts his hand on my shoulder, then he runs off. His hand is hot and sweaty, and I feel like he's left a big Tyler print on me. As we're throwing our trash away, Isabella says, Is it later yet? I have to get to class, I say. So, let's check out this quote that I pulled out of the text in chapter 41. It's a quote that is said by uh, Shayla in regard to Isabella when she confronts her in the hallway. She's like standing right in the middle of the hallway. People are walking all around and she has her hands on her hips and she's really not happy. And, and, and Shayla's response is like, oh my gosh, my eyes opened really wide at that. I don't know if I've ever heard Isabella say no like that. I'm shocked. So she just can't believe that she's being told no by Isabella because as we know Isabella is the type of friend the type of person who likes to please people and she just would never talk to her friends like that so in this moment we can see Isabella really changing and starting to stand up for herself so now we're going to move on to chapter 42 it's titled as if and that's something people say when they're like, no way, as if. That's the way we use that phrase in English. So here we go. Page 224. Tyler shows all of his little teeth at me in shop. Hey, he says. Hey, I say back. You uh, want me to, like, help you? You know, get started on your birdhouse? He looks hopefully at the pieces of wood I have in my hand. Thanks, I got it, I say. Yolanda smiles at Tyler like he's one of her little brothers or something. You can help me, Ty. Yeah, okay then, he says. After class, he puts his hand on my arm and leans forward like he is. Oh, no, I jerk away. He might have tricked me into one kiss, but there is no way he's getting another one. See you later, I say. I can't get out of class fast enough. But it's like I can't escape Tyler, even when he's not around. At practice, Angie and Natalie break away from relay team practice, and they come up to me. Angie says, you and Ty need to hang out with us at lunch sometimes. I gulp down the thoughts that are super close to spilling out of my mouth. Like, why is Angie asking me to sit with her at lunch now? She doesn't think I'm suddenly cool because of Tyler, does she? That'd be fun, I said, meaning me hanging out with them would be fun, not me and Ty. I'll save you a spot, Angie says. I will not be sitting at the basketball courts anytime soon. I'm trying to figure out how to lose Sweaty Boy and not be more connected to him. Um, I say, digging the toe of my shoe into the track. You better be careful, though. Steph said if you break Tyler's heart, she's coming after you, Natalie says, frowning at me. Natalie has never been nice to me, and it doesn't look like she's about to start. Steph? Tyler's cousin, Stephanie. I didn't even know Tyler had a cousin at Emerson. Yeah, you take care of Ty, Angie warns. Tyler's nice, mm, I start. I don't really... I start again. What am I going to say? What am I going to do? Oh my God. 
everyone thinks me and Tyler are talking as if. I had a bad feeling about this whole thing. And it's Julia's fault. I wasn't even playing command. This is totally unfair. Why did I ever, ever let him kiss me? So the next confrontation we're going to take a look at is the one between uh, Julia and all the girls that are on the relay team. All these girls, remember, are African American. And they've been wondering why Shayla doesn't hang out with them and doesn't have any black friends. And now they're thinking she's pretty cool because the rumor around the school is that Tyler and Shayla are now talking. And that actually makes the relay team pretty happy. And they're warning her, if you break his heart, you're going to be in trouble. That's what Natalie says, the one who's been the most unfriendly towards Shayla. She says, you better be careful, though. Steph said, if you break Tyler's heart, she's coming after you. So this is a little warning shot that the girls' relay team is giving to Shayla. Um, and Shayla is just can't even believe it. She's finally figured out what's going on. The whole school is talking about them being a couple. Um, now we're going to move on to chapter 43. It's called Blocks. And blocks are can be used in a couple of ways. Like some things can block you from being successful, like an obstacle. Um, this is actually in the case of this chapter. The blocks are the blocks that you put your foot on when you're about to jump off and do a race. Um, and she's at track practice now. So page 227. For some track events, you use blocks. They're foot brace things that sit on the track and let you be in the ready position to start charging down your lane. Using blocks looks like it should be easy. You just put your feet on, wait for the starting pistol, and push off. Right? Not right. You're hunched over with your butt sticking up, your feet pressed hard against the pedal, your itchy palms raised, with just the tips of your fingers on the gritty track waiting. And when the pistol sounds, you push off and go, except... It's not easy to push yourself out hard enough to get you going, but it's so hard that you fall flat on your face. And sometimes you just get stuck in the blocks. You aren't really stuck, but it sure feels as if your hands are gripping your feet and not letting you go. And this is an analogy, basically, for the way Shayla feels about everybody thinking that she's going out with Tyler. She feels stuck, like she got trapped in it. I was hoping Tyler hanging around was just a one-day thing, but he shows up again before my friends and I can get to our spot behind the portables. And the four of us stand there awkwardly. It sure feels like I'm stuck in the blocks. I work so hard to get my voice to say something, but I don't actually know what to say. Julia and Isabella start talking to each other, and I watch them as if I don't know who they are. Isabella throws a few rabbity looks my way, but then it's like she gives up. She makes Julia crack up over a story about her little brother eating donuts, but I feel like I can't laugh. She wasn't really talking to me. Tyler is talking to me and talking and talking. When the bell rings, Tyler walks me to P.E., just like he did yesterday, but this time we don't see Yolanda. And when I do see her in class with her mass of curls on either side of her head, she acts super sour, and I don't know at all what to do about it. And then lunch rolls around. I grab my lunch from my locker, but I can't muster up my standard slam. And then I make my way outside. Isabella and Julia are both waiting for me. They each grab one of my arms and start running. It's like a kidnapping. I don't know where we're going. But I know what's going on. We're ditching Tyler. We giggle all the way to our spot behind the portables. It's almost empty here at lunch. There's no tables or anything, so it's harder to eat, but it's private. As soon as we get settled, though, all the giggling stops, and Isabella has a coughing fit. She points at Julia like, you go first. Okay, so yo, why are you acting so awful, Julia asks. Her lips are tight, and she has one brow raised. Yeah, Isabella says, and her voice sounds really hoarse. I look back and forth between my friends. What? I'm not. Julia says, 
you didn't talk to us all winter break, and there is a thing called a landline, you know. We were calling you, and you would never come to the phone, Isabella says, and folds her arms tight across her chest. I don't know if it's because she's mad or if she's trying to hold her coughs back. Yeah, Julia says, getting louder. Obviously, there's something going on with you and Tyler, and we don't know what it is. She clenches her hands on her hips, waiting for me to say something. I hate that Julia and Isabella made me feel like we're having a fun secret adventure when really they just wanted to yell at me. Well, you two weren't being good friends to me, I say. You set me up, Julia. And when you told Isabella she should go for Jace, they both just stare at me for a second. And then Julia explodes. You read our texts? She sounds shocked like I'm the one who did the worst thing. I don't bother denying it. That's not the point. You shouldn't have told her that. Julia says, if Jace likes Isabella, you should let her have him. A good friend wouldn't stand in the way. But, Isabella starts, I don't know how you can say what a good friend would do, Julia. It's not like you're such a good friend anymore, I yell. Just because of a dumb command, Julia asks, I said I was sorry, and I don't think you should be mad at us that Jake isn't into you. We should be mad at you for being a Snoopy McSnoop face. Fine, I shout, and I'm not even caring that people are around. I shouldn't have read through the messages, but you're always with your stupid squad, like Isabella and I don't even count. Hi, key much, Julia says to me. Jeez. So sometimes I sit with my squad and sometimes with you. You don't have to be all salty about it. I've been friends with most of them for a long time, too. And you talk like Stacy now, I say. Yo, are you for real? Julia sounds shocked, like she doesn't know what I'm talking about. You have zero chill, Shay. She blows her hair out of her eyes in a big, exasperated puff. Before I can show Julia just how little chill I have, Isabella says... It has been weird, Jules. Her voice isn't angry like mine would have been. She just sounds serious. It used to be just us, you know, the United Nations, and you didn't talk like that before. Things change, Julia says, and sighs really loud, and everybody talks like that. No, everyone doesn't, I say, and we haven't changed, just you have, I say, not even trying to keep the anger out of my voice. Julia can act like she hasn't done anything wrong, but Isabella and I know the truth. We're in junior high now. Did you really think we were never going to change? Julia is close to shouting. Yes, I want to shout back at her. Is it really that awful to want friendships to stay the same? And to want your friends to back off from the boy you're crushing on? Stop shouting, I say. And fine. No, I didn't think that. Of course we're going to change, but not like this. Can you guys chill out, Isabella says. This isn't. Whatever she was going to say gets buried in a batch of coughing. Julia's face gets pinchier. If it was such a problem with me hanging out with my other friends, why didn't you just say something? Before Is or I can answer, Julia keeps going. And second, we're older now. You can't be a baby about stuff. Julia's lips are so tight they almost disappear. Her voice is super tight, too. If Jace likes Isabella, you should be happy for her. But I don't, Isabella starts. I'm not being a baby, I shout, not letting Isabella finish. How am I supposed to be happy about the boy that I like liking one of my best friends? It's not fair. I'm breathing hard and I'm starting to sweat. I want to grab Julia's shoulder and shake her. Well, it's not Isabella's fault, Julia yells. The few people around are starting to stare at us. Stop shouting at me. I feel like crying and throwing something at the same time. Could you two stop talking like I'm not even here? Isabella shouts. Her voice is so loud it makes me jump. I've never heard her sound so mad. What's the matter with you, I ask. Isabella clenches her hands into fists. You're both acting like my feelings don't matter. Don't speak for me. Talking that loud must hurt because she grips her throat and her eyes start to water. You know what, Julia says? This convo is totally ratchet.
That's not even how you use the word, I say, before I can stop myself. I'm out, Julia says. My eyes go extra wide because I can't believe she's going to just walk away and leave this big pot of bad feelings behind. Jules, I try to grab her arm, but she moves quick out of reach. Late, she says. Fine, I say. I want to ask her who's acting like a baby now. Isabella and I watch Julia walk away. Isabella blows hair out of her face, and then she turns on me. What's the matter with you two? Nothing's wrong with me, I say. That whole thing was dumb, she says. I don't even like Jace. He's cute, but he's not very nice. If I was going to like somebody, it wouldn't be him. I don't like the sound of that. It's almost like Isabel is saying that I'm dumb to like Jace. Thanks, I say. But I don't even want a boyfriend or to be talking to anyone. And that's not even the point. Isabella goes on in her croaky voice. Even if I did like him, I wouldn't have talked to him. That would have been messed up. But you and Julia wouldn't even let me say anything. Her voice gets a little louder with each sentence and it makes her cough more. I frown. I don't want one of my friends liking the same boy I like. Why can't I have dibs on a guy I like, whether he likes me or not? But I'm not sure what a friendship manual would say about that. Maybe Julia is right. A good friend wouldn't stand in the way of her friend. I shouldn't have acted so weird, I finally say. I guess it's not your fault you're scorching. No, you shouldn't have, Isabella says, ignoring the compliment. Because you know what's really messed up? What you didn't already know, I wouldn't do that to you. You should have known better. With her looking so sick, she looks really sorrowful. But her voice sounds strong. I've never heard her sound so forceful. Even if she's spilling her new force all over me, she sounds good, raspy, but good. You're right. She gets a napkin out of her lunch bag and blows her nose. So don't do that again, okay? Okay, check. Got it, 100%. We fist a bump that business. Then Isabella says, she was right, you know. We should have said something. Told Julia we missed it being the three of us. I guess so, I say. But I'm not sure if I agree. It seems like Julia should have known without us having to say anything. Isabella sighs, then pulls her hair to the side and starts braiding it. I'm so hot, she says. But she shivers and puts her sweater tight around her. Then she gives me a stern look. Okay, so tell me. Why have you been letting Tyler hang around? I stare at the tiny pearl button on Isabella's sweater. It started at the dance because Bernard was, you know, acting like maybe like he liked me. I thought he'd leave me alone if he thought I was interested in someone else. It feels good to finally talk about it. Isabella wipes sweat off of her forehead. You could have just told him you weren't interested, like, thanks, but no thanks. I was scared. Bernard still freaks me out. He can be okay sometimes, but you know, if he doesn't get what he wants, he gets all shouty and mad. I didn't want him to yell at me. Isabella starts coughing, so it takes a few seconds before she can talk. But then she says, I guess I can understand why you sort of pretended so that Bernard would back off, but you can't have everyone at school thinking you and Tyler are like talking. Why not? He doesn't really bug me all that much. I just ignore him. He seems happy, I say. But it's mean, she says sternly. Mean? I have no clue what she's talking about. Yes, Isabella smashes her lunch bag into a clump. How would you feel if a guy was letting you hang around like a puppy dog? I hadn't thought about it that way. I think it would be meaner if I told him I didn't like him. Don't tell him that. But figure something out, Isabella says, using her new forceful voice. Ugh, I say, because I know she's right. But I sure don't want to have to deal with Tyler. Isabella laughs, but then starts coughing so hard. I'm ready to catch one of her lungs. I offer her some water, but she waves it away. Once she catches her breath, I ask her, So what are we going to do about Julia? Isabella shrugs. She looks sad. And I bet I look the same way. I don't know. But walking off like that sure doesn't solve anything. She sniffs loudly. Ugh, 
This cold is killing me. Then the bell rings and we head to fifth period. All through math I wonder if the United Nations is permanently divided. I wonder how Julia could just walk away. I wonder how I'm going to break up with someone who's not even really my boyfriend. I haven't figured anything out by the time I get to shop, so I just stay bent over my birdhouse and I ignore Tyler. He gets close to me a few times, but maybe he can feel me thinking, go away at him because he backs off. I can hear him and Yolanda joking around and I'm glad she doesn't try to pull me into their conversation. I've never been so happy for shop to be over and I zoom out of class with even telling Yolanda goodbye. Maybe I'll be able to figure out this Tyler mess at track practice. Today we're practicing our starts out of the blocks. Try focusing on the first hurdle, Coach West says. Don't think so much about getting out of the blocks. I bend lower and I keep my fingers pressed against the track. I can hear my breathing. It sounds shaky. All the hurdles stretch out in front of me like a big row of problems. The first hurdle is figuring out what to say to Tyler. The second hurdle is deciding when to tell him. The third is wondering if I should call Julia when I get home. Coach West puts her hand on my back. Calm down, Shayla. You just need to be patient and focus. Block everything out and just wait for the starter pistol. I'm trying, I say. Bernard walks by, tossing his shot put up and down and shouts, looking good, Shay, at me. I almost fall right on my face. He really needs to work on his volume control. Coach West backs away a little. Concentrate, Shayla. The relay girls are standing on the side of the track having a water break. They're nudging each other and looking at me and laughing. If I were them, I'd be laughing too. Despite what Bernard said, I know I look ridiculous with my bottom stuck up in the air. When Coach West noticed me staring at them, she claps her hands at me. You're focusing on the wrong thing. I nod and stare down at the track at the hurdle. My stomach hurts and I feel like the blocks are yanking my feet, holding me back. Wow, that was a great chapter. So big blow up, big blow up between the friends. Um, this is a quote that's coming from uh, Isabella and she just busts into the argument between Shayla and Julia because they're talking about her like she's not even there. And she really yells in a really strong, loud voice. Could you two stop talking like I'm not even here? Isabella shouts. Her voice is so loud, it makes me jump. That's on page 233. So, it seems like even though she's had quite a few confrontations since getting back to school after the winter break, not too much has gotten resolved, but she's getting there. And in this chapter titled Blocks, she feels like that. She's blocked. She's being pulled back by the blocks and not able to get over the hurdles that are in front of her. It's going to require some work on her part to mend all of these friendships and to make sure that she uh, breaks up with Tyler without hurting his feelings or getting into an issue with the uh, girls on the track team. All right. Very good.